I'll read you a little quote from Arundhati's fantastic book, Capitalism, A Ghost Story. And if you haven't read it, I hope you will. It's, uh, it's along the same lines as things that can and cannot be said. But she writes that Martin Luther King Jr. made the forbidden connections between capitalism, imperialism, racism, and the Vietnam War. As a result, he was assassinated, and even his memory became a toxic threat to public order. Foundations and corporations worked hard to remodel his legacy to fit a market-friendly format. The Martin Luther King Jr. Center for Nonviolent Social Change was set up by, among others, the Ford Motor Company, General Motors, Mobile Western Electric, Procter & Gamble, U.S. Steel, and Monsanto. The center maintains the King Library and the archives of the civil rights movement. Among the many programs the King Center runs have been projects that work closely with the United States Department of Defense, the Armed Forces Chaplains Board, and other. It is co-sponsored by the Martin Luther King. It's co-sponsors the Martin Luther King lecture series called "The Free Enterprise System: An Agent for Nonviolent Social Change." So, whitewashed out of that history is the fact that he was striking with the sanitation workers, that he was calling for an end to wars and all wars, right? And the foundations are coming in and they're literally rewriting this history. And, and, and so if we aren't as active and outspoken as progressives out there, you can be damn sure, well, that you, you, you can be, you can actually absolutely be certain that whatever gains were made is going to get di digested up by the enzymes of free enterprise system. And this, this kind of language, um, yeah. uh, like, um, signature strikes. Yeah. So, okay. Now you're forcing me to, to put Trump and the election aside for one more minute, because uh, Arundhati Roy has a great, another great line. Uh, this made me just pause and just think about it for a while when she said uh, to you, she said, history is really a study of the future, not the past. And that's such a great and poignant line. And so if we don't study what ha the real history of Martin Luther King, if you don't read what Howard Zinn wrote, and you don't know what actually happened, well, that'll be your future, and and so that's why it's so important to understand all this. And then you, you mentioned the the whole whitewashing of it, and 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 so the foundations. She sometimes refers to them, I think, as controlled resistance, right? So uh, okay, we're going to set up these groups, and they sound lovely, and they do, and they a lot of them do good work. The NGOs, human rights groups, etc. But it's all you know, resistance we can deal with and, and, and nothing that gets too out of control. And if anything gets outside of the parameters of what's acceptable, we'll call it violence and ignore state violence. Like state violence, you're, you're not allowed to point out, that's forbidden. Uh, but if anyone resists state violence, how dare they? And, and I think that a lot of Americans have been brainwashed by the, really, by all of this propaganda, all the mainstream media, into that mindset and, and never really snap out of it where they go, oh right, wait, what? Is that, is that fair? Why, why are we discounting state violence? Why are they allowed to go in and mine in, in places in Africa and Latin America for precious resources and if the villagers resist, well they're terrorists and etc., cetera, uh, but we can just run them out of their house, we can destroy their village, their families, etc., and that's not state violence. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I myself would, I, I'm not, I would espouse a philosophy of, of nonviolence, but I have that luxury. And, um, and I think what uh, her most compelling argument to me was, she was saying, if you're in central India and you're four hours in a jungle, right, um, and people are being massacred by these mining companies, you know, nonviolence is uh, a political tactic. It's political theater, and it's only effective if it has an audience. So if it doesn't have an audience and there's no camera, or you can't preach nonviolence to people who are being killed. 